The new Apple MacBook Air 13 inch MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini with the new Apple M1 SoC have kickstarted the company's transition from Intel CPUs to its own in house silicon. Now, this move was a long time coming and a necessary one as it allows Apple greater control over the design and performance of its Mac computers. Now, I've been using the new M1 powered MacBook Air for about a week and it's time to review this and see if it's actually worth the hype. The new M1 MacBook Air's design and build quality hasn't really changed much from the Intel model. The keyboard layout, trackpad, ports and palm rest area are all pretty much identical. The force touch trackpad works brilliantly as always and the scissor mechanism keys are comfortable to type on. However, one major difference is that the M1 models don't have an exhaust fan and are cooled passively. This makes the new M1 MacBook Air absolutely silent even when doing heavy workloads. The M1 MacBook Air has two USB Type-C ports on the left and a headphone jack on the right. The Display 2 is the same as the Intel-powered MacBook Air. However, Apple has added support for the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, which should give creators more flexibility when color grading. Apple has made a few changes to the keys themselves though. The function button in the bottom left corner has a new globe icon now and this brings up the emoji menu by default with a single press. The F4, F5 and F6 function keys now double up as shortcuts for spotlight search, dictation and do not disturb instead of launchpad and the keyboard backlight brightness adjustment as on the previous model. Now I personally miss the brightness adjustment but the automatic adjustment works just fine and you can also add a shortcut for this to the menu bar if you need it. Now let's talk about specs. The M1 is Apple's first SoC for Macs and is built around a 5 nanometer process, similar to the A14 Bionic in the new iPhones and iPad Air. The advantage of the M1 SoC is that components such as the IO controller, RAM and the secure enclave co-processor are all on a single package, which is set to allow much faster and more efficient transfer of data and instructions, thus resulting in more than double the performance compared to an Intel-based MacBook Air. Now in India, these are the two pre-configured variants on offer. However, you can still upgrade the RAM up to 16 GB and the storage up to 2 TB through the Apple India website before you check out. The first thing that you notice when switching to the new M1 MacBook Air is that it wakes up pretty much instantly as soon as you open the lid. The second thing that's pretty apparent is how much cooler the new M1 MacBook Air runs compared to an Intel model. I notice a consistent difference of about 10 degrees Celsius or even more on idle and this gap widens even more when stressed. And it's not due to the lack of performance, in fact it's the exact opposite. With a lot of Safari, Pages and Photoshop use which is my typical daily workflow, the M1 MacBook Air performed flawlessly. Now, I use a Photoshop beta designed for the M1 SoC and it worked pretty well. In benchmarks, the Apple M1 SoC absolutely destroys an Intel MacBook Air with the latest Core i5 CPU on board. Apple also claims that the integrated GPU should provide a boost in graphics heavy workloads such as video editing and gaming. Now, the MacBook Air isn't designed for serious video editing, but with the M1 SoC inside, the Air can actually be considered for heavy video editing tasks. When previewing 5K clips in Final Cut Pro with the view set for better quality, my Intel-based MacBook Air rendered a slightly jerky preview with a lot of drop frames in between. The M1 MacBook Air, on the other hand, had no trouble rendering the preview smoothly with barely any drop frames. Exporting a 1 minute segment of the same 5K clip to H.264 took about 4 minutes on the M1 MacBook Air versus 9.5 minutes on the Intel MacBook Air. Now that's a massive difference in export time which just shows you the raw potential of this new M1 SoC. When it comes to gaming, Apple Arcade games look good and they run fairly well on the M1 MacBook Air. Games optimized for touch input are also relatively easy to play using the keyboard and trackpad. The Pathless is a newer and heavier title and it did have a few frame rate hiccups but was still playable at the default settings. With hardware out of the way, let's turn our attention to software. 
Now, the new M1 MacBook Air runs on macOS Big Sur, which is heavily optimized for the M1 SoC. Apps that have been updated to run on M1 as well as Intel CPUs are now known as universal apps, and all of Apple's first-party apps as well as many third-party ones have already been migrated. However, there are still many popular apps such as Slack and Adobe's Creative Cloud apps, which are not yet updated to run natively on M1. And these apps will still work more or less thanks to Apple's emulation tool called Rosetta 2. Now, when you run a non-native app for the very first time, you get a little prompt asking you to download Rosetta 2 in order to run it. After this, the non-native apps simply work without any additional intervention. Emulated apps take a bit longer to load than universal ones, but compared to an Intel-based MacBook Air, it's about the same time. Now, if you want to learn more about Rosetta and also Apple's M1 SoC, don't forget to check out our Tech Explainer series called Elemental, where we've done a deep dive into Apple's brand new silicon. Also, while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that bell icon so you're the first to know whenever we have a new video. Since the M1 is similar to Apple's iPhone and iPad SoCs, it's now possible to run many iOS and iPad OS apps on the M1 MacBook Air. You'll now see two tabs in the App Store for Mac apps and iPhone and iPad apps. Now, not all iOS apps are fully available yet though. Now, Netflix isn't there, but you can play Crossy Road or use apps such as Flipkart or Discovery Plus iOS apps run in windowed mode and some of them can be resized, but the experience isn't great as it's still very much a work in progress. Now, one of my biggest gripes with the Retina MacBook Air was the webcam. Apple claims it has improved the quality of the 720p FaceTime HD camera thanks to the new ISP in the M1 SoC. Now, with a side-by-side -side comparison, there is a noticeable improvement, especially in dim lighting. It's still a 720p webcam, sadly, but at least the quality has improved, making it a lot more usable. Now, the Intel-powered MacBook Air delivered more than satisfactory battery life, enough to last an entire workday and then some. However, with the M1-powered MacBook Air, I was getting much better battery life, sometimes averaging around 13 to 14 hours of screen on time on a single charge, which in itself is pretty impressive. When in standby with the lid closed, I noticed barely any battery drain. Another impressive achievement is the M1 MacBook Air's ability to keep going once you hit the red line in the battery meter. And despite warnings from the OS, I still managed to get about another hour and 15 minutes of runtime while streaming a movie in Safari, even when the battery was below 10%. The Apple M1 SoC might be a first-gen product for Apple's laptops and desktops, but it's very evident that this is the end result of years of perfecting the A-series SoC for its phones and tablets. Now, with the improved performance and efficiency of the M1 SoC in the same chassis, the MacBook Air is no longer just an entry-level laptop, but one that can actually be seriously considered for heavy-duty tasks as well. Now, Apple has even managed to improve battery life and make the design completely fanless. The cherry on the top is that all of this comes at the same price as a previous Intel-based MacBook Air. As well as the M1 MacBook Air performs, I wouldn't really recommend going out and ditching your Intel MacBook Air for the simple reason that not all apps have been fully optimized for M1 just yet. Now, while most non-native apps should run just fine via Rosetta 2, I'd suggest taking a look at the apps that you would use on a daily basis just to make sure that there aren't any known issues on M1 yet. But if you don't want to wait and don't really use any niche apps, then I'd say go for the M1 MacBook Air. It's definitely a lot more powerful, it lasts longer and it runs cooler make it one of the best value offerings in Apple's MacBook lineup. So that's been my review of the new M1 MacBook Air. Let me know your thoughts about this laptop in the comments below. And as always, for all things tech, log on to gadgets360.com.